Hi, everyone. It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do my video, my monthly video um, for October 2024. And so we have our final eclipse happening this month in the eclipse season. I'm going to talk about that to start off with. We have a full moon that is going to be in Aries. And we have a few other things going on as well. Um, so let's just start off with this new moon eclipse that is in Libra. So the details are this. It is on the 2nd of October at 11.47 a.m. And that's Pacific uh, Daylight Time. And the degrees we're looking at here are 10 Libra 03. So in order for you to have, you know, some kind of significant effects with this uh, eclipse, this new moon eclipse, I don't, I'm pretty close in my orbs, so I would say maybe 8, 9, then 10, 11, 12 at the most. But I really like to have it almost exact on the 10, right? 10 Libra. And of course, you also look at the opposite. Uh, in terms of like real effects, I look at the opposition. So that would then be Aries. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of Aries as well, right? And so when we think about the sign of Libra, we ask, what is the ruler of Libra? And that is Venus. So then we look at, well, where is Venus at this time of this new moon eclipse? And it's in Scorpio. Now, Venus isn't so happy to be in Scorpio. It's not light and bright and sweet. It tends to be deep. And with Scorpio, there can be obsessive compulsive type stuff as well going on. This could be a time for some people, especially if you've got um, your Venus uh, or, or anything else in your chart, like your sun and your ascendant, aspected by Venus um, in Scorpio. So Venus is going to be at 11 Scorpio. Then this could be a pretty intense time for you, uh, an intense time of change. So that Venus in Scorpio adds in a lot of depth, right? And then when we look at Mars, we've got Mars at uh, 15 of Cancer. And notably, right, so you want to make sure you check out where your Cancer is, the sign of Cancer is in your chart, because this month we also have the shadow period happening with Mars. So the shadow period starts at 17 of Cancer, right? Um, and then it will go into its retrograde uh, early December, come out of its shadow again, towards the end of February next year, 2025. So what's happening also, we've got a grand trine happening at this uh, eclipse time period on the 2nd of October. And I really like this because this is an actual uh, water trine. So it's going to bring a lot of uh, emotional energy into the realms here of this uh, eclipse. So we have, we have the actual, we've talked about the Venus, we've talked about Mars, and the other planet we have in this grand trine is Saturn. And Saturn is retrograde, but it's at 14 degrees of Pisces. And so take a look. Again, we'll, let's do the orbs here. Let's say between 10 uh, and 16 degrees of either Scorpio, Cancer, and or Pisces. If you've got those aspected, this could be a significant new time for you, right? Now, I think a lot of this eclipse is going to play out in a mundane on the world stage. Um, we've got this trine on top of the new moon in Libra. And I really feel that those Libran type vibes of the legal profession, uh, laws, legal cases, as well as diplomacy, are all going to be up at this eclipse. And just remind yourself that if you do have something around this 10 degree of Libra mark, and therefore you're affected by it, this effect of the newness in Libra at the eclipse could go on for about six months, sometimes even up to a year. So what do we have happening in October? We have the Supreme Court in the USA coming back. And I'm not sure if they're coming back on the 2nd of October when the eclipse is or the following week. Whichever way it goes, I think they're going to be playing into this. They may have some more things that they want to enact or change. So that might be up here in terms of the newness. But I think also, if we're really lucky, we will have some of these laws that the Supreme Court put out, put a different spin on it, take another look at it, listen to the people, and maybe decide to make some changes. We may not see that change at this time, 
but I'm getting this feeling that there may be something that they review again and maybe change some of those laws that they put forward to benefit everybody uh, in our society. And I'm talking especially in the USA. The diplomacy part I see as new starts with regards to hopefully these two different wars that are going on that seem to be getting bigger and bigger in some ways. So I think there's gonna be huge efforts to put that forward. We may not see uh, peace, real peace in these regions. So we're talking about Gaza, Israel, uh, as well as Ukraine. Probably till we get through next year in April. So we've got a Mercury as well as a Venus retrograde happening March, April. I'll get into those more details later, but I just wanted to give you the heads up. Because we've got those retrogrades happening in Aries, we can talk about war. Then it goes into Pisces is more about peace. I think we may actually come to some peaceful resolution, but I don't think it's going to be really hard and fast until April next year. But I think this is going to be huge inroads uh, in the right direction at this eclipse. So we have Jupiter sextile Chiron. And so Jupiter sextile and Chiron can just bring in some opportunities to heal, right? And this is around the 25 degree mark. So this would be 25 of Gemini and 25 of um, Aries. Okay, so let's head out of that eclipse and now go into some of the things that happen. And the 6th and 7th of October, we have Mars, as I mentioned, at 17 Cancer in shadow. So how would I use that? I would say pay attention to what comes up around that time period, right? Because it's going to be featured more as we get into the retrograde period. Most of this Mars retrograde is going to be in Cancer. And not only is it the retrograde, once we get into next year, like March, April time period, it's going to be going direct Mars, but it's going to be still in Cancer. Now, I have a Cancer Ascendant around 14 degrees, so I will definitely be affected by this. I'm expecting I'm going to be probably very busy. Um, there's a lot of home things that I'm doing at the moment too, so those may increase, and maybe I'll even get some of them done. So you really have to have something around the start, right, of the shadow period, which is 17 Cancer. Uh, and then we're looking at around six degrees or so uh, of Leo. All right, so that's what it starts in in December. I will cover it a little bit more then, but I just wanted to give you the heads up. Look to see where your cancer placements are. Pay attention to um, around this 6th, 7th of October with what comes up. And it could be just frustrations come up or you start thinking about planning to do something to take action. Know that that action may be delayed with the Mars retrograde. So what can you do? You want to do <laughs> plan A, plan B, and plan C. If you've got something important that you're planning on taking action, especially with regards to the time period of December all the way through the end of February, which is the exact retrograde time period, right? All right, enough about that one. We've got on the 9th of October a beautiful setup. Now it's a little wide, uh, but we have Venus trining Mars. And so we've got Venus in Scorpio and Mars that's going to be in Cancer. Well, this is a beautiful setup if you've got this uh, type of setup here. So we're looking at again around that 17 degree mark. And I would say that this could bring in some, for some folks, a relationship that is, um, it's got real depth to it because we've got that Scorpio part that is so, um, and, but it adds that little bit of obsessiveness. You know, you could be drawn to somebody uh, with this Venus trine uh, Mars. But the other thing it can bring in, because Mars and Cancer really speaks to our need for security and safety. So you could have a combination of that, right? But at its worst, it may be just trying to cling to somebody when maybe you need to back off a little bit. So if you're if you are entering into a relationship around this time, just be aware of those types of um, energies that could be coming up and maybe just back off a little bit. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, but certainly an intense time for relationships, for sure. Um, on the 10th of October, we have Jupiter retrograde at 21 of Gemini. So I would say that this could bring in, you know, maybe you're wanting to expand uh, could be expanding in writing, whatever Gemini um, means for you. 
So it can be typically we're talking about communications of any sort. Maybe some folks will have something delayed with regards to making a presentation somewhere. Writing could be delayed um, or they have to replan that. Really, Jupiter itself tends to just bring beneficial influences, even in retrograde, even in square, even in opposition. So it might be just a time to regroup with regards to whatever communications type things. For others, it might be siblings involved here. Travel could be delayed for some reason. You know, Jupiter rules the ninth house of international travel, but Gemini rules the third house of local travel. So if you have this 21 degrees in your chart somewhere, you may find that travel, either international or local, maybe for your work, is delayed for some reason, or you have to take a different route. And again, knowing this is coming up on the 10th of October, if you've got something important you've got to get to, have a plan B. We have Pluto going direct. I should have balloons and fireworks around here um, on the 11th of October at 29 of Capricorn. So now we know that it's making its way back to Aquarius. Now that's not going to be really till about mid November where it does go into Aquarius, but this is the final stretch, right? And it's going direct. So I'd say that's a positive thing. Um, on a mundane worldwide level, this type of transit can bring in that final gasp from all those institutions, all those governments that really need to fall. So we could see around this time period, 11th of October, so we're talking mid-October time period, the final demise of those governments that really need to go and the people in power. Power likes to be shown for sure with Pluto, but truth does too. And Pluto going direct could really reveal uh, some significant truths at this time, especially because Pluto is at that anoretic degree, right? That's a critical degree, 29 degrees. And not only is it that, it's the wrap up of Pluto in Capricorn in our lifetime. We will never see this again. We have Uranus, um, you know, is going to be all month at 26 degrees of Taurus. So if you do have this degree as well, there could be some um, enlightenment, uh, some shakeups, some wake-ups for you. Um, because it's lasting the whole month, um, and if you've got this degree, 29, 26 of Taurus, then expect some real big enlightenment and big change coming your way. When we look at the 15th of October, we have Venus again, and it will be opposite Uranus. Well, this can really amp up the excitement with regards to what? Mainly relationships. Um, so this could, on its own, bring in a relationship unexpectedly out of the blue for you. But the other thing this can do, so both with Venus in Scorpio and with Uranus in Taurus, we're really talking about money here as well, right? Your money or my money. And so with the opposition, I would say there may also be, I know the Fed has already done their reduction in uh, interest rates, but this could bring in something maybe associated with that too, where there's some unexpected change in the money markets on a global level, right? But on an individual level, this could bring in um, suddenly out of the blue a relationship. It can also, on the other flip side of that, have a relationship end at the same time, right? Now on the 16th of October, Venus again, and you know, let's remember that eclipse that I just spoke about, we have it ruled by Venus. So Venus is playing a big part here, not only at the eclipse on the 2nd of October, but right the way through halfway of October, right? Now it's gonna be trying Neptune, and it does this, you know, more than once through a year, so it's like the only time you're gonna have Venus trying uh, Neptune, but this is a beautiful thing too. This is going to bring in opportunities for us to be inspired, great inspiration, right? So, hey, if you've got to give a presentation, say around the 16th of October, this setup of this transit could really have you inspiring people. Um, Venus can also stand for uh, females. So there may be some inspirational thing that happens here with regards to females, or a female may provide great inspiration at this time. Now, just going back to that eclipse again, um, I'm not going to go into what's called the Saros cycle. Um, I know other astrologers have, but just know that all these eclipses that we have happen are part of larger cycles from way back, 
you know, sometimes a thousand years ago, and some of them will go forward for at least another few hundred years. And so each of these eclipses belongs to a certain cycle. This particular eclipse that I've just spoken about belongs to what's called the Eight South. And then you have certain themes associated with it. So for this one, even though it's a new moon, it has separation, loss, and to finish something. But finishing something and wrapping up something, but for some reason there's a little bit of sadness associated with it. So, I mean, this could play out for some folks where you have this great creative project that you've been working on maybe for years, and you finally put the final touches to it, but your whole life has revolved around it. And now you're seeing that, ooh, I'm gonna have to now let that little baby go whatever it is that you're creating. So that sort of thing, just to give you, you know, something to imagine what I'm talking about. The other big thing about this, this eclipse, though, is to take good care of your physical body, right? Let's move on to the next lunation. So that's going to be the full moon in Aries. It occurs at 24 Aries, 35 minutes. It's a full moon, so we know that the sun is in the opposite sign. So here we are featuring Libra again, right? So that's 24 Libra is where the sun will be. It happens on the 17th of October uh, at 4.27 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. The moon will be conjunct in Chiron. And so we're talking about healing energies here of some sort. And because it's a full moon, these could be difficult healing energies, not necessarily um, something that is smooth and moves forward. Don't forget, this is a full moon. It is not an eclipse, but a full moon. Something could come to light on a global level or a mundane level with regards to something to do with our health. That could be coming up here as well. Um, we have Venus, um, as well as Pluto at this time, at 29 degrees. That would have Venus in Scorpio, and that would have uh, Pluto in Capricorn. So these are both at the anoretic degree. This is going to bring in some intense energies. And I really, I'm seeing this as females with the Venus or a female or both confronting those in power powerfully. Yeah, there's going to be some contentious stuff going on here at this full moon to do with females and maybe female related things. I think we all know that I, what that is. We also have Mars uh, will be squaring Chiron. So it's like healing is wanted, right? But for some reason, it's being prevented. So I'm thinking there may be a lot of things come up here regarding women that are not good for them from the health standpoint. I'm just going to leave it at that. Nicely, though, we're going to have Jupiter sextiling Chiron. So there's opportunities here to expand for the benefit, right? Jupiter's all about benefits. Um, good advice comes with Jupiter as well. Teaching comes with Jupiter. Foreign people, foreign things. Um, so there's an element here of uh, potentially teaching, but also of expanding the opportunity to heal. So it's interesting. We've got both the expanding healing, but then we've also got kind of almost the opposite of, you know, there may be irritation with this. So it, to me, says opposing forces with regards to something to do with our health, probably on a global level. We have Venus opposite Uranus, still. So we already covered uh, the Venus um, opposite Uranus up there on the 15th, but it still continues here on the 17th of October. Again, just maybe some enlightenment with regards to anything to do with females, anything to do with love, um, but also this could be something happens with a female um, unexpectedly that shines a light on that female. We have Pluto having a wide trine uh, to Uranus, right? So we've still got Pluto at that anoretic degree. And then uh, Uranus isn't so, it's a few degrees off, uh, but it's still in orb. So this could bring in unexpected opportunities for people to be put in power. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, trines are always favorable, right? And because we're wrapping up this uh, rather difficult energy of Pluto and Capricorn, I think Uranus, and don't forget Uranus does rule Aquarius, which is where Pluto is going to be going into permanently for about, um, what, over 20 years, soon, in November. Um, this could bring to light what that's going to look like, or give us an, an idea of what this is going to, what is that new 
power? What's that new government going to look like, right? So the ruler of this full moon, of course, is Mars. Where is Mars at this time? It's in Cancer and it's in its shadow period. And on top of that, Mars in a wide square squares both uh, the Sun, right? in Libra, and then that moon in Aries. So I would say this is going to be probably aggressive types of action. This could be warlike situations. Now, Mars doesn't necessarily like being in Cancer. Mars likes to move ahead and do things. Um, but Mars and Cancer can form this very protective type energy, safety energy. Um, I, I want to protect myself here. So there could be a theme of that around just generally speaking, right, in the, the wide public, where we need to protect ourselves here. Um, it also refers to protecting yourself and your individuality, right? Because it's the moon we're looking at, and that is in Aries. We want to, we want to do our own thing. And this is Mars saying, not so fast, not so fast. Um, issues like things are surrounding anything to do with cancer, so that's motherhood, mothering, the family, um, could all have some contentious issues around at this time. So when we look at the 23rd of October, we have Venus now in Sagittarius. Um, I know it's not the best place for Venus, uh, but at least it brings in some optimism here, right? And it'll be trining a North Node. So I would say something is going to happen here with regards to a mundane aspect where, and this again could be a female, a positive female, but there's going to be some positive news about our destiny. And I think this is going to be brought through women, maybe, generally speaking, or a woman who is very optimistic and positive. On the 26th of October, we have Mars forming a favorable aspect with Uranus, and that's going to be the sextile. So this is an opportunity to make change. Okay, so how can you use this? If you need to make some change in your life, and even if Mars is in shadow, it's okay. It's still going direct around that 26th of October will be a good time to take some action to make some changes in your life. That's just period. Take some action, movement. Seek out enlightenment. Opportunities like that are going to exist there big time for you. On the 28th of October, Mars still now is going to trine Neptune. And so this is going to bring in opportunities to, um, opportunities to be inspired. Like this is like, you know, a global inspiration. You know, when you get that inspirational uh, speaker really saying, wow, I feel optimistic about my future here, for sure. I really feel good about what's going on. Um, and if you've got this uh, aspected in your chart, so this is kind of the latter degrees uh, for Neptune is around, I think, the 24, 25 degrees. So it's around that degree point. Um, you could have some action that you take is very uh, inspirational. But don't forget, Neptune also rules things like uh, dance, uh, music. This would be a fantastic time to put, say, some music or dance, especially dance with Mars, the body, uh, together. Or we may witness some beautiful inspirational dance or music at this time. All right, that's it for October. Let me give you a little peek now of November 2024, because it's an active month, too. We're out of eclipse season once we end uh, October, but we've got a new moon in Scorpio. We have a full moon in Taurus. Mercury will go retrograde almost mid-month, and it'll be in Sagittarius. That Mercury retrograde stays retrograde all in Sagittarius. We have Saturn turning direct in November, and Pluto direct, but now in Aquarius. So big changes. Talk more about that next month. For me, I always like to pick some key words for the month after I've looked at the astrology. And the key words for me in October 2024 are relationships, the law, the legal profession, and diplomacy. So next, I am going to do uh, or take a look at your ascendant and or your sun sign. Uh, my preference is, is if you could look at your Ascendant or listen to or watch your Ascendant to begin with, and then look at your Sun sign. Both are really important. So for Gemini, this new Moon Eclipse in Libra at 10 degrees is going to be trying your sign. And Gemini, that's fabulous. It's in your fifth house. So 
some Geminis are going to start um, a new love at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring in balance and harmony into your life. Big time. Now, you're going to have to let go of something because you've got the south node there. But there's going to be, for some Geminis, some message comes in. Now, this could be, say, you are doing internet dating. This could have someone messaging you, and this becomes a new love in your life. For others, children are going to be involved. You may actually get pregnant at this time or give birth at this time, especially with the eclipse. I would say giving birth is potentially important for some Geminis. This could be a birth of a new creative project. You get given this creative project, but there's a little bit of a caveat where you've got to let go of something, maybe something that you're doing, and take on some new way of doing, uh, a, you're, you're tasked with doing something new creatively, but it means you've got to let go of something. And someone gives you that in a message saying, should you decide to take this, you're going to have to let go of the way you do it that way and do it this way. Uh, but it's positive for you, Gemini. You know, it's going in your favor. Um, what else? New businesses. So you could start your own business at this time as well. It would be a great, great time to start it, actually. In fact, I started my business on, um, it wasn't an eclipse, but it was a Libra uh, new moon that I started my business on. So that could be up for some Geminis as well. When we look at that full moon in Aries, it forms a sextile with your sign. So there's going to be opportunities here for you with the 11th house involved to make new friendships. And these friendships that you're going to make are going to support your individuality, right? Because it's in Aries. It may even support you um, moving forward with who you are. Like it actually highlights. They like your individuality. They like how you express yourself. It can also bring in opportunities for you to work with different groups. Um, but being the full moon, it's like you're letting go of something as well. But it might be just letting go of a way of doing things. And I'm thinking when we're talking about friends and groups you belong to, you just may make a decision at this full moon to end a certain way that you are interacting with friends. Maybe you get this enlightenment um, at the eclipse where you say, you know, I need to shift something here uh, with regards to people understanding I'm an individual. I just don't, I'm not just a sheep. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking in my head. But I'm an actual individual going on my own path. And I need to somehow interact with my friends and the groups I belong with so they understand that, right? Hopes, dreams, and wishes. You could tie up some hope, hopes, dreams, and wishes. And I know somebody who's a Gemini that is in the process of tying up a second master's at this time. And that's my daughter. And so this is you getting that view in October of, wow, I see this dream finally coming true. And don't think that can't happen, Gemini. Believe. You're going to have opportunities here to do something with your hopes, dreams, and wishes. Take it up. Especially as it ex helps you express your individual individuality and the path you want to go on. Now, when we look at that Mars uh, retrograde, it happens mainly in Cancer and it involves your second house. Great time to negotiate more money. Great time to say, hey boss, I'm not being valued here. And value is equated mostly in our society, as money. So this is you negotiating for more money, uh, Gemini, for sure, like hands down. Now, it could be you negotiating for a different job as well. That could be brought into the mix here because obviously you get money from the job you do. It's mostly the sixth house and the tenth house we talk about for that, but I'm thinking it could be. Now, the other thing is you could be looking for security, um, security and safety with regards to your money. Now that could play out with you deciding to put some guardrails around your income. Uh, something as simple as whatever checking account you have, there's a good strong password on it that someone can't go in there. Um, checking your credit reports to make sure that things aren't happening with regards to the money that you're making that are causing potentially some problems for you. Yeah. Um, else could this be? Yeah, you just may want, I'm thinking the general thing is going to be, you want to get more money. You're just hitting these walls all the time. So knowing that this Mars retrograde is coming up and there's going to be delays, first of all, be okay about it, but try in advance of that to get things moving forward so that at least the things are moving forward in you getting potentially this money in your hand, more money. 
get the dates that if your boss says, sure, we'll give you more money, get it in writing, get the dates that this is supposed to happen. But know if she says, oh, next paycheck, you're going to be getting this money, know that there's going to be a delay. The delay may just be that, you know, accounting hasn't caught up with getting you reinstated with this money. So what can you do? Check with accounting prior to the time period you're going to be getting it and saying, have you got all the information to get this new amount of money or this raise that I'm supposed to be getting starting at this point? Did my boss give you that date? There's nothing wrong with asking that. Just don't be aggressive about it, okay? Hands down, Gemini, don't get aggressive about getting more money. Don't get aggressive about getting a new job. Be assertive for sure. Let your personality shine through but don't get aggressive because there's going to be a potential with these delays where you're going to be upset. All right. But hey, everything else in here, Gemini, especially that new moon eclipse, I'm excited for you. That fifth house is one of the best houses in my view you can have activated for positive things coming into your life. Take care, Gemini. All right, folks. So that's going to end um, my whole discussion here of this month of October 2024. I'm sending lots of love out to everybody and lots of great best wishes. Um, didn't talk about Halloween, but hey, enjoy yourself uh, at Halloween. I haven't looked at that day, but there's no big moon or eclipse at that time. Um, yeah, enjoy yourself, love yourself and love other people. Um, make sure you're bringing balance into your life. Try to go for the win-win situations with this big influence of Libra as well as Aries, right? Love to hear from everybody. If you want me to do your chart, this might be a good time to do it. Um, I may be doing a, uh, a live session coming up in November. I will definitely make announcements about it where I will be looking at the year ahead. I've still got to do all the planning for it. All right. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon.